there seems to be this mounting pressure to make the most efficient use of our time in quarantine, to build skills, to learn new things, be productive. I've just found it kind of difficult to focus, difficult to make new things. We all process isolation and uncertainty in different ways, and I actually think designers are better equipped than most to deal with it. Not knowing the outcome is actually why we design, right? This is a different kind of uncertainty, though. And so to help deal with that, I found that returning to first principles has been really helpful. You know, first principles can be anything. For my wife, it means cooking. For my kids, it's playing music. For me, it's meant sketching. Sketching helps me process this, I guess. Uh, maybe it's because it affords me some control. Maybe it's just because sketching drowns out everything else that's bouncing around in my head. Either way, maybe dissecting this little sketch will help inspire you to get lost in your sketchbook for an hour or two. And that's something that I've never regretted. So we're here in Procreate. And I've started off with the base canvas. My base canvas is a deep blue, so it's kind of an indigo blue. I've added some highlights on top of that, and then some medium highlights to give it some more depth and dimension. And then I have a very subtle grid here, and you can see that at about 11% opacity. So it's just really subtle and in the background. So something I use to set proportions. All right, so to start our line work, I have my blueprint color palette, and I'm just choosing the white in that. And then the brush that I'm using, so in my 30 by 40 sort of brush set here, I have a Kuru Toga, my favorite mechanical pencil. I have a soft colored pencil, a sign pen, pilot precise pen, jelly roll, and two sort of dash lines. One is a dot and one is just a straight dash lines. And we're gonna start off with either the colored pencil or the Kuru Toga. I'll just start off with a soft colored pencil. Um, and I'm usually drawing things with less than 100% opacity here. So my corners kind of overlap. This is the section, so if we kind of get our ground line in here, I'm picturing this chapel to be sort of buried below grade. So that's the section through it. And then we'll, we're just gonna do a basic plan here. So this is our floor plan. A lot of people start off by designing just in plan and the real spatial action happens in the section. So a section is simply a vertical cut through the plan. So I sort of picture this to have this kind of floating roof and then maybe some like a green roof. So some grass on the top of it here. And with this sketch, we're just gonna start blocking things out and then we're going to come back and change it. So we need a way to get in, down into this space. So I'm thinking that we wanna have a ramp that comes off in this direction here. Real sketchy and loose. So we're cutting through here and we're looking that way. So as my ramp comes down, I know I want to get into this space that way. Let's put up, let's get some scale in here. Actually, I'm going to put this on a separate layer. So I can scale it and move it around as I need it. So we'll just kind of set this as the scale. And this just helps as you're drawing to key it to the human form. Let's come back up to our Kuru Toga. Let's do some layout lines here. So going to do the kind of indication of a cross for our chapel. Get some layout lines here. Not quite straight. Nice thing about Procreate is you can you have a quick undo and then you can just kind of come back. Okay, I want to make these a little mo bit more translucent. There's that. Let's grab our colored pencil again. And let's make this a kind of a solid element here. So solid element, as you come in, you enter this space, and then really the, the chapel is here. So if we're going to draw this properly, we would indicate that there's some kind of overhead element here. 
and here. Let's indicate the bottom of the ramp being there. And then we have this overhead plane here. So let's get in our overhead plane like this. And I'm thinking it wants to be a little more dynamic than just being a just a rectangle. So what if it was a slit like this? Kind of this knife edge that you slip down this ramp and underneath it. Okay, so that seems okay for now. Now what I would probably do with this plan is I would come back and either use the sign pen to outline the plan like this. Heavier line weight at the perimeter. And I would do the same for the section. Maybe even a little bit thicker. Uh, that feels a little too thick. So as I start to think about what the shape of this roof is, I'm thinking it'd be nice to have some kind of a, you know, much like we're doing this with this knife edge, like what if we, what if this roof shape were like this? Seems kind of nice. I'm going to start working perimeter of this. I just like to dial the opacity back on this pencil and then you can adjust the pressure. This is definitely pressure sensitive and the more you tilt the pencil over, the more shading you can get out of it. Higher tilt is a finer point. We're going to come back and shade the ground later so this doesn't have to be anything epic there. Uh, I want to get some definition to the edge of this roof. I think we'll keep it wavy and a little bit sketchy there. And I think what we want to do with this cross would be nice if there were, be nice to have some kind of ribbon of light in this cruciform shape that's kind of coming into this space here. Um, and then I'm also thinking, wondering if, let's get to our Kurutoga. So I'm wondering if this edge could be water here. Let's shape this roof a little differently here. I want to cut it back. Whoops. Let's cut this roof back a little bit. Come back to our Kurutoga. What if this edge were a tray that reflected light into the ceiling of this space? You know, it's nice to think about the sort of senses as you're drawing here and thinking, imagining what this sort of kind of quarantine chapel might be. And you know, part of that is light, how we treat light. So for example, let's just add another layer so we can kind of sketch on this. So how light might be reflected off of this water surface onto the ceiling. So the ceiling could be glossy, it could be another material, you know, but this is a way to sort of bounce light in. And also I'm wondering if there is a way to bring that water sort of down as a sound element into this space. So if we come back to Kurutoga. So on the exterior of this, if this is this kind of water tray that follows this form at the perimeter, is there a way that it can find its way sort of down this wall here? Like maybe it's controlled in the center so that the water is sort of flowing down this face and into
love about this about procreate actually i never expected to like it as much as i do uh, but erasing in a sketchbook is like it's pretty phenomenal all right so let's just block that out notice this is just really rough these are kind of rough basic ideas so this heavy block here feels like a little out of place and i'm just wondering if we can turn this into something else like what if this becomes the sort of bell tower. So the bell tower, let's just say the bell tower kind of comes up here and this is letting air and light in. And it could also be kind of an observation point. And it'd be interesting if this were positioned in this kind of grove of trees. So just diagrammatically, we have this as our sort of bell tower coming up. And it could be a ladder up to a platform. So let's just say it is now. Let's say the platform level is here. Ladder comes down. So really in this space, in the plan, it's kind of this hovering element. Let's make this a straight line. So let's see, the ladder might be here. And then the platform comes above. We'll have to figure out what the shape of that platform is. Okay, so let's start cleaning up the roof here. So we're back on our line work layer. Let's erase this kind of scrappy grass that I have in here. And, um, and let's start thinking about maybe some grassy textures. So let's continue the ground line over. So we'll come back to our sign pen. Continue this over. Some light texture there. And we'll come back to our vegetation brushes and let's use this grass number three and we'll put it on a new layer. Just call it grass. Okay, so I've got the opacity dialed pretty far back. Just give it a couple of different sizes there. Do it on the roof here a little bit. more pressure makes it uh, more opaque. Okay, so that seems to be reasonable for right now. And what I think, I think I wanna add some trees because what I'm thinking is this, let's again, put the trees on another layer because when we put things on different layers, we can just control their opacity sort of infinitely. And that is the trick to getting this to really sing and have the right depth. So, We'll put this on its own layer, trees. And that looks not quite large enough, so let's do something like that. And you can see it's too, it's way too bright, so I'm gonna dial it back probably to about 16. That feels good to me. So it's definitely in the background. Okay, let's get another tree in here. This one, I'd like to distort it a little bit. Oops. So let's flip it horizontally and then kind of just warp it a little bit. So same family, but feels like it's its own tree here. Place this behind it. So I'm picturing this kind of bell tower piece coming up in being in the trees, in the sort of leaves of the trees. So you can place it off to the side, select it, and then just move it into place. That way you don't have to try and be uber accurate with your placements. Okay, so we're just varying scales of things in here. So like this bell tower up here 
So with this bell tower, maybe there's, you know, maybe there's these micro sort of viewports out to the landscape here, or maybe it really just focuses you on the, yeah, that's what it is really. Because coming up into this bell tower is all about sound, right? So, oops. So if I want to indicate the sort of wind moving through this and the sound that it would create, so I'm going to kind of, that was a nice line, but I wasn't on my own layer. I should be on a new layer. Wind, I'll just call that wind. I'm just going to change the streamline of this up so that it's just more smooth. Feels pretty good. So here's the advantage of having it on your on its own layer. You can come do that, and then we can, again, dial back the opacity of it. Maybe the real dappled light and different perspective here, these sort of viewports, happens as you're climbing up the ladder in various places. So maybe that's uh, where that comes in. We also need a way to support this structure. So let's just come back and block in some columns. I mean, it's invented, so whatever you choose to add is fine. Column line, column line. Got that, and we probably need to show that here in the section, our columns. This is all the Kuru Toga that I'm using. Straight lines, kind of come back in and erase things that you don't need or not. I think I'm going to use the colored pencil to just kind of shade this in. Kuru Toga, I have to have some way of this, this being supported. There's probably a rope or something here. And I'm wondering if the chimes could actually be, they could almost be like these sort of tubes. They could be very stick-like, you know? And yeah, they could actually be made of wood. They could be hanging from here. And when the wind blows, this is the, the piece that's, it's an abstraction of the trees, or maybe, they're, maybe it's leaves. Maybe these are shaped like tree leaves. And when the wind blows through, that's making the sound. I don't know. It's, it's thinking about all the dimensions of the space. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of an interesting, fun exercise here. So we're going to add some annotations here. And this is where having this grid in place is really helpful. So we'll put one there. Put one here and maybe at this level, the sort of observation level. And then you can choose to add some layout lines of varying opacities. So I'll make this a little bit more opaque. Layering on information is what makes this kind of interesting, visually interesting to me. Let's add some text here. Put the date. So let's also add some earth, indication of earth. I'll show you the brushes I use to do that. So I like the charcoal brushes, particularly the willow charcoal brush for this kind of thing. So I like to add some indications of rock. So subsurface stuff you can have them at the surface too. I'll have to come back and modify those layers. Let's go a little wider on that. And then we have to come back into our line work layer, do a little erasing.
It's like our grass layer got tangled up in that too. I like these sectional elements because they kind of give life to the drawing. And uh, you can also, yeah, there's probably a few more things we could do with that too in just a minute. So let's erase the grasses from this. We'll probably have to come back and add some heavier line weight. Anything in a section that's cut through should always get a heavier line weight. We want to be on the line work layer and we want to use, be using the sign pen. Just kind of that sub menu gets really annoying, but without it, it's also annoying. Okay, that seems pretty good there. The one thing on our earth layer, I don't like how this texture is coming through that rock. Let's come back to our charcoals. We're in the willow charcoal. So this is definitely pressure sensitive and closer to the section. I'm pressing harder, so I'm getting darker shading here. That contrast is kind of nice. And if you feel like you've gone too far, I'll show you a trick for modifying that. So if we think this is too much over here, you can hold down the eraser and you're gonna be editing with the current brush. So you can come back and really dial it back in a very natural way. And our opacity on this might be a little high, so we can kind of back that off too. But I think I want to add a little more in here. And then you can start doing things like, let's come back to our line work layer. You know, are there other sectional items you want to add? So what if the, uh, what if you were to draw if you're drawing the section through the wellspring on this whole thing. So let's just say that it comes up like this. We can treat this as a layout line. Love that straight line feature because my straight lines are <laughs> sometimes suspect. Let's, uh, let's get into this, okay. So there's some kind of indication of that's the wellspring. And you can come back in detail like what that is. Is that is that literally just a, you know, is it a sort of shaped water spout flowing into, you know, this metal edged pool here? Lots of kind of possibilities for you to take this further and invent. I'd probably spend more time coming back and refining line weights and then add a little more texture on the grasses here, so this is kind of long bra grass brush. Just to kind of randomize it a little bit. If this is our wellspring, let's come back to our pilot pen and uh, let's fill this up with water. It's a little too thick. Because that's on a separate layer, we can just dial that opacity way back like that. So this, if this is truly a pool, we should show that in section. And find this line work here. Sketching is it's just the best kind of distraction, an escape from reality into a world of your own making, one without budgets or delays or even physics if you choose. Be safe out there. Until next time. Cheers, my friends.
Hey. <laughs>